What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. It's that time of year again where I talk about the previous year's free PS Plus games. I'm really excited because in my opinion, 2020's free PS Plus games were a lot of fun and really, really great compared to 2018 and even 2019, at least in my opinion. So today, like I do every year, I'm going to be diving into this year's 2020 free PS Plus games ranking the games that I downloaded, and talking about them month by month. Let's get right into this. Up first is January. To start off 2020 with the free PS Plus games, they did amazing in my opinion. The first month was a great start. And the first game was the Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection. This is the first three Uncharted games, and they're a lot of fun. Now, I had already previously played all three games on the PS3, and also played all three games on the Nathan Drake Collection when I bought my PS4 because it was included. Now, this game, for it to be free, I'm assuming a lot of people have at least played one of those Nathan Drake games for Uncharted, but... Probably not all three, and this was more dedicated to anybody who has not played the games, uh, getting them a chance to play the games, which is awesome. So they included it free. In my opinion, the Uncharted games is amazing. It's one of my favorite game series of all time. This one here, right off to a great start. It's three games on its own, and I'm going to rank it 10 out of 10. It, it was such a fun game. I love the story, and I absolutely loved everything about it. The next game for January, however, was one that some people liked, some people didn't, and that is Goat Simulator. Now, I'm one that, when it comes to simulator games, I'm okay. I don't mind them if they're of interest to me, but Goat Simulator was one of those games that it was just made for fun. Not really a true Goat Simulator, it's just crazy stuff that you get to do in the game. And it's great if you want to go for a Platinum, if you want to earn all those trophies. I have yet to finish the game just because I lost so much interest in it and I don't even feel like playing the game anymore. With that being said, a lot of people still enjoyed it. Some of the stuff is still pretty cool, but the graphics, the mechanics, everything is really, really iffy for this game. I'm only going to rank it 4 out of 10. Next up for February, we have another collection, and that is the Bioshock Collection. Now, I have never played a Bioshock game prior to this release for free for PS Plus, so I decided to download it, the first three Bioshock games. And the first one, I must say, I didn't really care about. It was not for me, so I started to play it, didn't get very far, and I immediately stopped. The second game, I honestly thought was a lot more fun and I really enjoyed playing it. Now I have yet to continue playing it. I've started playing other games and never really went back to it. So that's not really saying much good for the game. Usually if it's a great game, I'll dive into it and at least get more than halfway. I'm assuming I didn't even get a quarter of the way through the story. Story was unique. I liked the atmosphere of the game. It was very interesting. And for the third game, I have yet to play it, but I'm assuming it's going to be good. Some people say it has nothing to do with the first two games. It's just an odd thing that they decided to put Bioshock name on. So I don't really know how that's going to be. I have yet to play the third game. But for this one here, for what I did play of the second game, I honestly did enjoy it. I'm going to rank it 6 out of 10. Next up for March is something that I had my doubts about. And that is the Sonic Forces game. Now for me, I'm not one for liking side-scrollers, and Sonic, for the most part, a lot of the earlier games were mainly side-scrollers, and I did like it as an arcade-style game, but I was never really into Sonic whatsoever. But since this was a free game, I decided to download it, and honestly, I'm glad I did. The story was amazing. It's not just a side-scroller game. It is more of 3D aspects throughout the game, which was very interesting. It had a cool character customization option that not only did you play as Sonic going through the main campaign, but you also went and played as your own character, which was really cool. I honestly loved this game. The story was amazing. Now, some of the trophies were harder for this game, but I still loved the game. This one here, I'm going to rank it 7 out of 10 because it is one of the few Sonic games that I actually played and finished 
and really, really enjoyed. Next up for April, they decided to go and have Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, as the game. So not only did we get Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection back in January, in April, we got the fourth game, which was a lot of fun. Now again, I had already previously played this game before it was released free for PS Plus, but regardless, this was such a great game and I absolutely loved it. I love all of the Uncharted games just because the stories line up and some of the things from the first couple games actually reoccurred or at least were mentioned in the fourth game, which I thought was a lot of fun and very unique. Now again, I'm going to rank this 10 out of 10 for Uncharted because I absolutely love it. The next month, May, was kind of not the greatest month. The other game for the month was Cities Skylines, which is basically you're going and you're creating your own cities with all your different roadworks and everything and adding everything to your city and building up the population, which I absolutely love games like that. It really felt like one of the old games on your phone or iPod that you used to play back whenever I was in high school. So I thought the aspect of it was very cool. However, fairly quick, I lost interest of it. Still a great game. I loved a lot of the features that it had, but I lost interest of it very, very quick. I'm going to rank it 5 out of 10 just because I did like the game, but my interest was not there for it. After the first month by June, I was basically done playing the game. Next for June was, in my opinion, an amazing month. Probably the best month or one of the best months for 2020 for the free PS Plus games. Up first is Call of Duty World War II, which I have already owned, but it is still a pretty decent Call of Duty. I do like some of the aspects for it. I like that everything is dedicated to World War II. Now, comparing that to Battlefields, it didn't really meet the authentic stuff that I like in war games. It was still good, but it wasn't the greatest World War II themed game that I've played. I'm still going to rank it really high though. I'm going to rank it 7 out of 10. I just thought they could have done a little bit of a better job. The other game is Star Wars Battlefront 2, which holy crap, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be one of the top three games for how long I've played it this year because once it came out, I started grinding right away. I beat the campaign, the story, which was amazing, and the last three DLC story missions I thought were a lot of fun because they included that for this free game. So both the regular story and the three DLC missions I thought were a lot of fun and very, very interesting. Now that's coming from somebody that is not a diehard Star Wars fan. I remember playing a couple games on the PlayStation 2, but I never was really into the franchise. I ended up grinding it out and eventually I got the platinum for this game, but it was a lot of hard work and grinding out to get that done. There's a lot of hard trophies with this game, but with that being said, since I really enjoyed the game, I got the platinum, I grinded everything out. I'm going to rank it 10 out of 10 because I really loved this game. And up first is NBA 2K20. Now again, sports games are not for everybody. I'm not really diehard into NBA, but I do enjoy playing them, especially with Jack. This one here, I'm going to rank it 7 out of 10. I thought the story is interesting, the career mode story, but I didn't really dive into it much further than that. So 7 out of 10 is the highest that I can go for it. And I know not everybody is into basketball or sports games, and it did get a lot of people hating on that game alone. The next game for that month was Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I actually just started to play a couple months ago. I beat the story. I thought it was a great game. It was the first Tomb Raider game that I've ever played. For that reason, since I absolutely loved it, and it really reminded me of Uncharted series, which I love, I'm going to rank it 9 out of 10 because I really, really loved this game. Next for August was an amazing month. Up first, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered. I absolutely loved playing the Modern Warfare 2 game back on the PS3, playing with some of my high school friends. It was a lot of fun. I really loved that game. This game here, going through and playing it was a lot of fun. It reminded me how awesome the game was. So I am going to rank it really high. The only downfall for this game that I thought they could have done is have an online feature. When the first Modern Warfare game was remastered, they remastered everything, including online. This one here, they only included the campaign. No online, so you can't play with anybody. And I did like a lot of the online maps and everything. So that here, I can't rank it 10 out of 10. I'm only going to rank it 8 out of 10 for that reason and that reason alone. 
The next game is one of the top games for 2020 that came out in 2020, and that is Fall Guys. I absolutely love this game. Whenever it was released that month, it became free for PS Plus, which was awesome. And I absolutely love that. So that's where I got the game for free. I'm ranking it 10 out of 10 because I love Battle Royale style games. This one here is not the typical shooter one. It's just a fun kind of game show where based on your skills, you have to qualify to the next round or you'll get eliminated and have to start over. So I have yet to get a win at the time I'm recording this, but I basically play the game for fun mainly. 10 out of 10 for me, an amazing game. A lot of people love it. And it's a game that I've been live streaming on the channel which I absolutely love doing. The next game is PUBG, and I have already owned PUBG before it was released free for PS Plus that month, but I absolutely loved it. It's just, I don't get a chance to play it often because most of the time now I game by myself, and it's very strategic battle royale style game, more realistic with a lot of the elements and everything. So I am gonna rank it high, eight out of 10. I just wish I could play it a lot more than I have. I don't think I've played it in the last six to eight months likely, but it still is a great game. Eight out of 10 from me. Next up is October. The only game that I downloaded for October was Need for Speed Payback. Absolutely love the Need for Speed games. This one here compared to the year before Need for Speed 2015, it really missed the ball, but it still is very interesting. I liked the story and I liked a lot of the elements. It just was not the greatest. I'm still gonna rank it high, seven out of 10. It's just, I wish that this game delivered a little bit more than it did. Next for November, the only game that I downloaded was Hollow Knights. This is a side-scroller game and I know I don't like side-scrollers so much. However, it was a simple, kind of like a beat-em-up style game. It wasn't that difficult. I liked the graphics at least, and I did like the game for the most part. However, it's not something that I would really play often. I'm only gonna rank it four out of 10 for that reason. And finally, December's free PS Plus game, Worms Rumble, which at first it kind of felt like it was going to be not that great of game, but after downloading it and playing it, I started playing it and playing it and playing it more and more and more. It was very addictive, which is amazing for a game. If you can get drawn into the game and keep wanting to play the game for hours, that means it's a great game. It's basically like a battle royale style game, except it is a side scroller game, but one that you can jump up onto platforms and different things like that, shooting. It's a lot of fun, honestly. You have to play this game to really get a feel for the game. I'm gonna rank it highly. I'm gonna rank it eight out of 10 because I loved this game. It was a great, great game in my opinion. Now again, I just want to remind you there was other games that came out free for PS Plus this past year. However, if they were not of interest to me, I did not bother downloading it. And some that I did download it, I immediately deleted them right away because after starting playing it, they just honestly weren't for me and I didn't really like the game and I knew there was no point of even talking about it in this video. But out of the games that I did download that were free for PS Plus in 2020, I must say this year was amazing. I absolutely loved, for the most part, all of the games that were free for PS Plus this past year. The Uncharted games were amazing. My first Tomb Raider game was awesome. I absolutely loved it. The first Star Wars game since I started playing on the PS2 since then was Star Wars Battlefront 2, and I absolutely loved the game. Got the platinum for it. Fall Guys was amazing. They had, honestly, a lot of great games and a lot of titles that were free for PS Plus this year which really makes the one-year subscription definitely worth it. And I always purchase my one-year subscription Black Friday for about 30, 35% off, which is a hell of a deal. So for 40, maybe $45 for one-year subscription, you get all of these free games that you get to download each month because you have the subscription why not? In my opinion, it honestly pays for itself. So comment down below what you guys think. Did you guys think this past year's free PS Plus games were worth the subscription? I definitely do, but I want to hear what you guys think. I'm going to leave this video here. See you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.